What's up everybody, Drew right back at it again with another video. Today we're going to be talking about Operation Harsh Doorstop because it just came out the other day and if you were unaware what this game actually is, we'll go over it really quick here. Operation Harsh Doorstop is a game that's being made by a YouTuber, Blue Drake, who got sick and tired of loot boxes and predatory monetization with no single player missions or mod support, so their community started making this game. It's a sandbox shooter with all the features a game should have. Oh, and they're funding it on Patreon and giving it away for free. The only thing that I find wrong with this statement is all the features that a game should have because uh oh boy we're gonna get into it i asked the question to the developer what does this game have that squad doesn't the reason why i'm referencing squad is because in the past he's always talked about what squad is doing wrong and what his game is gonna do better he even changed his bio on steam as a reaction to the whole monetization announcement from squad and so that's why i'm doing the comparison but anyways he responded to me with it's free and it's gonna have a really good mod system that incorporates mods into the game if he deems that those mods actually fit and I look at those two things as positives but the big negative here is just the base content itself and that's pretty much what we're gonna be focusing on in this video today the vanilla content in my personal opinion there's just not enough of a game loop to keep people invested for longevity from what I understand it seems like blue Drake is really banking on that modding system to work and I have to ask the question are are people really willing to wait for that to actually come along when they already have games like squad arma 3 hell let loose all these other types of games and well i guess the answer is yes and no despite what people think gamers can be very very patient but i just have to wonder how long gamers are actually gonna wait and if they even like this system because i keep getting a bunch of comments about how drake is getting like cheap labor off of modders for just importing mods into the base game i don't know if he's gonna be paying these guys but if he does pay them then it does kind of remind me of um how zero hour outsourced a lot of their stuff so that they could get the game really going like sure the game felt very frankenstein in a lot of ways but i mean it got the job done they were coming out with like a ridiculous amount of content in such a short time so i don't know should let me know what you think down below on that one but uh personally i never really cared too much about the modding scene me when i buy a game i usually play it for the game and with operation harsh doorstop my biggest issue with this is just the current content content as it stands right now. Like I put 900 hours into squad and I hardly touched the mods. I think mods are cool. It's just, it's generally not what I focus on when I get into a game. Mods are kind of like a secondary thing for me. Like I want to play the base game first and then if I'm feeling up to it, I'll hop into the modding scene. So that's just what we're going to focus on today. What's in the game currently and is it worth it? The only thing that I really like about this game is just the gunplay and even the gunplay still has its issues. Sometimes it's questionable on if I've actually hit someone even though it feels like i've shot him like five times maybe i just chalk it up to desync but i think i was in a server that actually had pretty good ping i really like the reloads on every gun that i've used you can reload while aiming in i really like how when you're running you can actually reload it's a tarkov thing except it looks better in this game pretty much all of them have single fire and automatic aside from the bolt action obviously you can do point shooting even with world war ii guns when it comes to bolt actions i feel like there's some sort of delay because when i tried to pull the bolt back on some of the bolt actions it just didn't do anything it was just slapping my left click right here and he just doesn't want to pull the bolt back until about the fifth slap that's an issue you are able to lean but it's not really a lean it's more like a tilt your head sort of deal you're not able to lean while you're prone though there is no melee you can't put a knife on your weapon you can't rifle butt or anything like that at the moment you can't check to see how much ammo is in your weapon there is no fast reload or slow reload you can't see what fire mode you're on adjust size to take into account how far a target is i have no idea if they're actually going to add those features i just wanted to mention it movement overall feels pretty good animations for throwing look pretty good although sometimes when he throws it it feel like it goes from an animation to like a grenade just spawning in and chucking itself so everything that's in first person looks and feels really good aside from the vaulting there's no climbing system there is a vaulting system but it's very selective on what services you can actually vault over it seems like you can really only hop over things that are just at your knees and when you vault over it's like the slowest vaulting i I've ever seen in a game and it kind of like stutters at the end there and it really doesn't do like a whole vault like in third person you actually see somebody vaulting over a wall but the camera in first person moves over the wall like the camera's on rails in a cinematic cutscene going forward yeah that needs an overhaul another thing that i like about this game is that there are five different maps from different eras you've got rizla which is a modern map pmc's versus insurgents monte casino world war ii americans versus world war ii germans lambda 
Pong, which is a Vietnam map. You got the Americans versus NBA. Cough G, which is kind of like a Cold War map where you have Americans versus the Russians. And Argonne, which is a World War One map where you have Germans facing off against Americans. And I think the cool thing about this is that you can actually put any faction on any map. So if you wanted to, you could put a modern American military up against World War One Germans. It's an unfair fight, but hey, you can do it. I think that's something that came out of uh, Battlefield 2042's portal mode. Not directly inspired, but it's something like that. I think that's pretty cool. There does not appear to be a limit as to how many bots you can put on a map, which is a bit concerning. <laughs> the only problem that I really have with this is that I feel like a lot of people are just going to do a whole lot of the modern stuff and not so much the World War One or World War Two stuff. I'm sure there's people out there, but you're definitely going to see a lot more people pulling for more modern maps. And there's only really one at the moment. So uh, yeah, that's pretty much all the stuff that I really like about the game at the moment. Let's get into stuff that I feel that it needs. There are no vehicles in the game. There is no construction to build up defenses or any fobs. No mortar emplacements. You don't have a commander to call stuff off map or do big bombardments. Here's a big one. There is no anti-cheat, which is a huge problem because when you're doing a free-to-play model, there's no way to stop hackers from constantly breaking up gameplay. The developers say to write your own anti-cheat scripts. It's up to the server owners to implement their own preferred anti-cheat and uh, people just haven't taken that well. Some even find it insulting. In my personal opinion, I think the game should have launched with some sort of anti-cheat because there's already hackers in the game. There's nothing really stopping them at the moment. And with such a customizable SDK, it's just going to make it even harder, I imagine. And then allowed its users to switch it out if they wanted to. Why should they have their own anti-cheat? Well, we're already seeing hackers in the game. And it's not like there's a price gap to prevent them from going back in and doing all the stuff that they're doing. Maybe it's not a big thing, but I just imagine not a lot of people wanting to code that stuff in. Like, they just want to set up servers and be done with it. But what are your guys' thoughts on that? Let me know. The game does have AI, which is a plus if I want to play the game solo, but they can be dumb as rocks. I've seen a lot of them getting stuck in one place at like the very beginning of the map and not really advancing. But what's interesting is that they can actually be overpowered because they can literally snipe me from miles away in areas where they shouldn't even be able to see me. And yet I get randomly capped for just peeking my head up a little mountain. There are no queue times. So anytime that I want to get into a server, I can't just hop into a queue time to wait until somebody drops out. It'll just literally throw me to the very front page. There are a lot of open spaces in these maps that prevent players from advancing. They seriously need like an overhaul to add a lot more cover, like busted up cars or divots in the ground, barricades, stuff like that. Sure, there's smoke, but the smoke just isn't big enough to cover an entire area. And most of the time, your silhouette will show up through the smoke, making you an easy target. It is almost impossible to coordinate with your teammates effectively, because you can hardly see their name tag and can't really tell if someone is on your squad or not unless you're like up close and personal, like literally kissing him on the cheek. Being a squad lead means nothing at this point in time, because you can't drop rallies, you can't put marks on a map, you can't coordinate with your team effectively, because you just don't know where they are, without having to stop and turn on your map, really wish you could still move while the map is open, and trying to orient the map so that you figure out where exactly they are. Squad mates tend to get lost in the chaos, unless you're right next to your squad lead, but even then you're just basically another rifleman, with not a whole lot of power. Same thing goes with the medic. Medics are in the game, but really only in name only. They can't really revive or heal people all that much. I mean, I think they can heal people, but riflemen's using bandages basically has the same effect of just healing you all the way. Really the only thing that seems to work really well is the support class, you know, the guy with the backpack that replenishes your ammo, bandages, and grenades, and all that stuff. That's the only thing that really seems to work at the moment. There's no ammo boxes or vehicles to get ammo from, so you better hope that your teammate has an ammo bag and he's actually willing to share, or you're basically screwed. Just die and begin again. The game modes at the moment are very basic. I think there's really only one, or at least it felt like there was only one. It's just basically squads invasion, where you have to constantly push objectives, and it's not terrible, but I just really wish that you could place down fobs and rallies so that you could actually hold the objective a little more effectively, because the moment that they take it, you get pushed back to the next objective and you can't freaking do anything about it. The firefights aren't that bad though, unless you're playing against AI then it's kind of BS. And at least they allow us to spawn at the previous flag, instead of all the way back at base. But anyways, when it comes to the sound, I've seen people compare it to popcorn. And that's probably all you need to know, but what I'm trying to add to this is that it's not that great. It needs to have a little more of that weighty, beefy feel, you know? Guns need to sound like guns, and explosions need to sound like explosions. But sounds don't normally come in until the game is fully done, so... 
I guess I'll give him a pass on that one. Visually, this game isn't stunning. I've actually seen mods that look better than the base game, and it does not bode better when compared to its competition. When you compare it to its competition, it just makes this game feel dated, even though it's in Unreal, which you could have fooled me. I know that gameplay matters more than visuals, but when the gameplay starts to feel clunky, you start to notice. Thankfully, the gunplay isn't that clunky, but due to the fact that there's just not enough of a game loop to keep me around, you start to nitpick a lot of stuff and then realize a bunch of things and yeah. Operation Hearts Doorstop at the timing of this recording is a very basic shooter with not enough of a game loop to keep me invested for the long haul. I could see myself playing this for about a week and then waiting maybe a year or two to see if it's gotten any better. I've seen a lot of people compare this game to Squad's release where they really didn't have a whole lot of stuff in the beginning either. In fact, I've actually heard that Operation Hearts Doorstop started with way more features than Squad. Whether that's true or not, I guess it's up to you. I've also heard people being very skeptical about the development of this game like I said before with the whole modding thing but then also people will bring up Warfare 1944 which if you don't know it was a World War II game with this like own unique style where it kind of looks a little pixelated and the reason why it was like that is because you could do a lot more stuff with lower graphic kind of games kind of like Battlebit produced by Drake Lang Labs and published by Microprose I covered that game a while back and I even bought into it myself because not only was the funding going to go towards this game but it was also going to go towards Operation Harsh Doorstop this put a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths because all of a sudden I only saw that they were really talking about Operation Harsh Doorstop and not so much Warfare 1944. People started to notice that Warfare 1944 wasn't receiving any updates. Drake only seemed to be talking about Operation Harsh Doorstop. Turns out there was some sort of disagreement between Microprose and Drakeling Labs. We don't really know what it was on, but people speculate that Drakeling Labs just couldn't do a simple contract and the other side claims creative freedom. I guess we'll never really know. But what gets people the most is that Drake told people to buy into this game, only for it to get abandoned. Now, it's not like a lot of people were losing a lot of money out on this game. The game was only like 10 bucks. It sucks, but I won't lose sleep over it. But still, he hyped it up and flaked out. I just felt like I had to mention this, just to give context as to why people don't trust him. It might not even be his fault that Warfare 1944 is abandoned, so I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. But at least, with Operation Harsh Doorstop, it's free to play, so I don't know if I really have that issue, but yeah. I'm pretty um, I'm pretty mixed on this game not gonna lie I feel like there's more negatives than there are positives so I guess we'll see what happens in the future that's pretty much all I really got to say about this game let me know what you think down below and uh, yeah I will catch you in the next one bye bye